If this one, like, you know, everyone's saying this is the last chance and you, met, you said that yourself, if this one feels bigger than the others? It doesn't feel bigger. Honestly, I feel more comfortable in this position than I ever have. Um, I know it's, it's big because where I'm at in my career, and like I've said over and over again, I'm, I'm probably not going to get another shot to climb the ladder. I'm 35. How many shots can you give somebody? How many times can I climb that mountain? But I'm trying not to like focus on that part of it and just take it as another fight, so I don't add any pressure. Yeah. Everyone, I'm sure, would love to go through their career undefeated, right? But can you maybe take something more out of the fact that, hey, if I win this title, it's because I persevered. I got knocked down, I came back. I got knocked down, I came back. Is there something more cool about that, that, hey, I may not have gone through my career undefeated, but every time I got beat, I came back, and eventually I got it done? I think it says... a. I mean, to go undefeated is incredibly hard to do and crazy impressive. Um, but to keep picking yourself back up after getting knocked down, showing that never say die attitude, pulling things together, learning from your past mistakes, and just have the the grit in you to keep pushing forward when things don't look as, so well. Uh, I think it, it says a lot about the person and their work ethic and their self-belief. And you get to live on a different side. There's a lot of lessons on the on that dark side of uh, not winning, that you learn and go through life that the person who's undefeated might never go through. So I've learned a lot of lessons about fighting, but about myself through, through all of this. Yeah. Islam was in here earlier, and he says he has the worst style matchup for you, right? And you can understand why he would think that. You fought Khabib, but that went how it went. How do you approach this fight differently to that fight and Islam's style in particular? That fight was, you know, years ago. I, I, if I'm not a better fighter than I was then, and I wasted years of my life. Um, but he's right. Over the, over the last 17 years, that I've, 18 years that I've been fighting, these are the toughest style matchups for me. Guys who are heavy wrestlers, top heavy, um, good top control. You know, they're able to take the fight where they want, to, want it to be. And I'm the kind of fighter who does well in the fight. And if they can slow that down and make it more of a, ma of a match or a competition, I need this, I need this to be a fight. You said about that's happened to you before in your career. Let's say he gets you down, right? And you feel that he's getting the back and stuff like that. How do you stay calm and think, I've been here before, but this time it's not the finish. I'm getting out of it. How do you get that mentally through your head as you're in the fight? Just stick to technique. Uh, be in the moment. Recognize positions. And, I mean, that's all training and years and years of work and technique and success and failures that I've had that hopefully put me in a position to get out of whatever's going on. we got to see when we get in there. Yeah. And last one for me, he was in here and he did say that he, you don't think you can win this fight, nor does your coach. Your coach doesn't think you can win this fight. Why is he wrong? Because I can definitely win this fight. You know, if I touch his chin, he'll, he'll go down. And he'll find that out on Saturday. You know, maybe that's something he doesn't need to believe. Maybe he needs to be positive and be confident walking into this, which he should be. But if you don't think I have a chance to win, you're lying to yourself. Kind of going off that, um, I think it was one of Habib's, like, or Islam's, like, it was like one of his training camp videos or whatever. And Habib said that, you know, everyone underestimates Dustin. But then when we were asking fighters here, like, what do you think about this fight? They all just praise you. So I'm curious, like, do you actually feel underestimated? Or is that like Habib trying to keep Islam focused on, like, hey, let's not overlook this guy. We know how dangerous he, he is. I have no clue. Um, but over the years, if anything, I've learned in fighting is like the media, my opponents, their camps, the critics, don't matter, bro. I'm, it's in my hands. I'm the only guy who has the opportunity to make this happen or whatever decisions I make under those lights on Saturday. You know, I'm the guy in the driver's seat. All these other guys talking are passengers or in the back seat, you know. I, I steer where this goes. And knowing I have that power and believing in my skills, you know, I, I don't care. It's all noise. Well, just taking the fight part out of it, all these fighters that we've been talking to, like they all start with like, oh, I, I love Dustin Poirier. I'm, I'm a massive fan of Dustin Poirier. So even the younger guys, so I guess what is it about you that like it doesn't seem like anyone really has anything negative to say about you when they're just like watching you fight? Because I, I, maybe I've been fighting for so long. Um, they grew up watching me fight. You know, they were just getting into MMA when I was fighting on a, on a big stage. I'm not sure, and, and also the style of fights that I have. Every time I go out there, it's a fight. You know, I'm gonna, it's kill or be killed. I know that, that's used a lot. People over say it, but it's true. I'm gonna finish Islam or he's gonna finish me. That's just the way I fight.
And I know everyone's going to compare Habib and Islam, but Islam was in here, and his, even his coach said, like, you know, Islam, he thinks he has better boxing than you, wrestling, whatever. So I'm curious, when you do look at Islam's whole game, how would you rank, rate his striking in there? Uh, because, you know, he said he's a high-level boxer, too. And I believe him. But I would touch him up in a boxing match. And uh, I don't know if he really believes that. Of course, anybody can land a shot and, and get beat. But I will box this guy. I will box his shoes off. Last one for me. Uh, he was saying that the new gloves feel a little stiff, and he's had to ask for multiple gloves because they kind of get worn out after a couple uses. So I'm curious, what do you think of the new UFC gloves? I think they're more comfortable. It's easier to make a fist. I do think there might be more cuts because the padding isn't as dense. I feel like the knuckles are going to uh, pierce through that padding that they have and, and cause more cuts, I think. But I like them better. They're more comfortable to make a fist. The other gloves are really stiff and, and straight. These, this, whatever foam they're using in these, it's, it's really easy to make a fist. Was it hard to adjust knowing that you, know, like you fought in almost more than anyone on this card in the old UFC gloves? Was it hard, a hard adjustment? No, I like the new ones better. I, th I think they're better for, for me. Dustin, to your left. Hey. So you, you've obviously fought in this area before. You're 2-0 and in this area. You beat Jim Miller in Brooklyn. You know, you won, uh, you beat, uh, excuse me, Michael Chandler, of course, at the Garden. And now you've got this championship opportunity in Newark. I mean, is there something about kind of this area that you're, I mean, you're a Louisiana kid, but is there something comfortable about coming out to, you know, this big metropolitan area that you, you kind of like or maybe feel good about? I'm not sure. I don't really put, like, anchor points on things when I have success, like why am I winning here? I just think, um, if anything, maybe the same time zone as Florida. My, my whole training camp was done on East Coast time zone, so not having to adjust to time change and things like that, maybe, I, I have no clue. Maybe the opponents, maybe where I was at in my career, a lot of things add up to get that done. Now Islam and, and uh, Khabib, they only have one opponent that was common between the two of them, Glace and Tebow, and now you will become the second who's a common opponent between them. You've you fought one before, now you're fighting this other one. Are you kind of, uh, how, how familiar do you feel like you are with their two styles, like uh, analytically? Those, honestly, those, I mean, I have great grapplers at American Top Team, great wrestlers. Uh, Mateo Scamera beat me up for the past six weeks. But their style is different, you know, the way they ride, um, the way they, they use their weight in different positions. It's just a different style. Um, but I think I have a better understanding of it since fighting could be. You know, I've never felt that kind of pressure before. And I think Islam's, obviously his takedowns are a little different, but his top pressure and, uh, in the grappling scenario is going to be similar. They're different people, obviously, and they have different strengths and weaknesses as well. And you've only been in the cage with one of them. But, I mean, how much does kind of having the, that time against that style, that you're, you're kind of speaking as one style here, how much do you think that gives you a little bit of an advantage over, like, let's say, a previous fight that you've had against someone you've never really fought that style? I, you might be, it might be an advantage, but it's just more of an understanding. You know, you don't realize it. Even though I've been grappling and wrestling and fighting my whole life, till you get in there and feel it. You know, somebody can explain it to you or show it to you, but until it's live competition and you feel that pressure and you feel their intelligence of weight distribution and, and where they need to be at and where you need to be at is, is something you have to experience. You talked about being content with your career. That, that's, that's something that you'd really like to, whenever the things are done, you'd like to be content. I mean, when, when have you felt most content with your career to this point? I mean, over the years, more and more of my, uh, my peers, you know, giving me flowers and saying nice things or they respect the way I fight and stuff like that. That's kind of put me into that motion where I, I do feel like, okay, I made an impact. I'm respected by my peers. That means something to me. But I don't know. Like, I always feel like there's something else to do. There's more to do. I don't, that's what I'm battling with myself. I hope I can one day wake up and be content with everything. What about the interim belt? Obviously, it, it's, it wasn't the main belt, right? I, and I understand that, but it, it, there must be some level of accomplishment feeling like, okay, I, I have to this point walked away with something. It was UFC gold. You have it. It's in your house, I assume, right? Or at your gym or somewhere. Yeah, it's in my house. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I have a UFC title that says world champion with my name on it in my living room. Um, and, you know, I, I hold that belt up high because Max, when I beat him for that belt, was on a 12-fight win streak. He was the current featherweight champion at the time. So it's not like I pulled the name out of hat and beat somebody for an interim title because the champ couldn't fight. I mean, I fought a world champion, a multiple-time world champion. And uh, that's a huge win. So it's, a, it's up there, but it's not undisputed. That's the, like I said it over and over again. That's the last spot. What else can I do in the sport? You know, I, I'm not... I'm not 
bragging up here, but man, I've been fighting so long and of my generation, I've fought the best guys at 155 pounds in the world. Some of them twice. I've done it all and I've beat a lot of them, but I haven't had the label of undisputed world champion. And that's the reason I ever put a pair of gloves on when I was 17 years old, is to be the best in the world. And Saturday night I have an opportunity, 25 minutes, to call myself the best in the world. And that's powerful and that's something, it's not about, it's not about money, it's not about uh, the Hall of Fame, any records, it's about me accomplishing something I told my wife when I was 17 that I was gonna do, that I've been chasing and climbing back up to make happen. It's, it's, it's not about business, it's a personal thing that I think if I can get it done, I can look back and say, you know, I'm content. I'm proud of everything I did. I set a goal out as a kid that knew nothing about what I was walking into, but kept walking, you know, kept walking and picking myself up and I, and I got it done. I, like he asked me the question about somebody who goes undefeated their whole career and, become, and defends their, their belt and stuff. And that's incredible and so hard to do. But somebody who's been thrown away, somebody who's been underdogged, somebody who's been beat and broken and put themselves back together and really fucking did it, you know, that's what I'm after. That's what I want. And last question I have for you is, you know, obviously you, you're playing with a lot of emotions. You're playing with a lot of things that are going through your head with regard to your future. You're trying to focus on one particular fight right now and get through that. Um, do you imagine that there's any sort of rash decisions that would be made in the cage that night? Or maybe we would wait to hear from any sort of future plans? I don't know. I'm, I am kind of an emotional person, so we'll have to see in the moment uh, what's going on. But I would like to get back home, talk to my team, speak with my wife, and kind of really make intelligent decisions from there. But we'll see what happens, man. Thank you. Life is a fight. All right. Thanks. Uh, just, just, to follow up on, just to follow up on his question, I mean, you did say, you know, you're still on the fence, win or lose. Is it, is it win or lose based, or is it performance based? It's feelings based. You know, do I want to do this again? Because I love it. I'm scared to not be able to have that opportunity to do it again. But I also know, I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm broken record on repeat saying the same stuff in every interview, but dude, how much can I give of myself to this sport before it, you know, before it's, because every time I get in there, I'm leaving pieces I can't get back. I say this over and over again, but I really mean it, you know, this isn't good for you. And I understand that. And would I do it again? A hundred percent. It's given me everything I have and I love it. And it's taught me so much, but I'm 35 years old and I have a daughter who's about to be eight years old. I have businesses, my family, you know, my wife's, t I'm sure, tired of me being gone and being in training camp and being stressed out about another fight. You know, I'm tired of missing soccer practices, cheer performances, birthday parties. You know, I, I want to be there for my family and to be in a routine. I and mean, I'm very thankful for fighting. And like I said, I would do it again. But at what point am I giving too much, you know? There's a feeling among some athletes who have said once you kind of start talking about retirement, you're kind of already there. I mean... Do you, do you sense that at all? I mean, are you feeling any more reflective this week when you come in? No, I'm just thankful for the experience, trying to em embrace it and take it all in. Because every, but I've been saying, going on the, on that, dude, I've been saying I'm done for the last five, six years and still beating these fucking guys up. So I'm not, I'm just, I'm cut different, man. So what's the pull? What's the pull that keeps bringing you back? I'm like Pookie, like I said. I just can't get enough. Like, even though I think I have my fix, I'm back home barbecuing, watching football, have my daughter's soccer game, and I'm like, I gotta scratch this itch, man. I have to fight somebody. And I think that's going back to when I was a young kid. I've been fighting for as long as I haven't. So having a name circled on a calendar is like, everything's okay in my life when I'm preparing for a fight because I've done it for so long. Being far away from it, like even when I had my hip surgery after I fought Khabib, I was going crazy, you know, because I think that was my longest layoff at the time of my career. I just had to be in a fight, you know. Um, I, I, I don't know, I can't really perfectly explain it to you, but I'm addicted to, to fighting. Yeah, Dustin right here. There's a singer that's passed away and uh, he's got a song, a cover of Rihanna's Diamonds and it's been trending everywhere. If you go to the video of it on YouTube, it, the comment section is flooded with comments about you walking out to it. Is there any chance that we can get like a, a Diamonds remix with the boss when you walk out this weekend? Yes, Willie Spence is, is the guy you're talking about. I'm pretty sure that's the name. Yeah, we do, I'm going to do a mashup. It's happening. I've, I've, been, I've been seeing all the fans tag me on all kinds of stuff on IG and Twitter. 
And then, the, man, the dude's voice is incredible. And uh, I just think another title fight, lights are off. You hear that powerful voice. I come out. It's just time. Lafayette Street. Lafayette's in the house. I become the world champion. And last questions I got two is, I know you're trying to find legacy and all that, but is there anything interesting about maybe just getting a really amazing paycheck every year and beating up Connor every single year until he gets tired of it? <laughs> yeah, that would be nice too. Uh, I mean, but what, if, that's another thing going back to like, how much do I want to give? What am I fighting for at that point? Just checks, the, the big fights, just to be in the, in the, in the rush. It's like, I'm trying to, to balance these things. Like, I have enough money. I'm, me and my family are okay. I don't have to keep beating myself up and being stressed out and grinding through these training camps and walking into the unknown over and over again. Um, I don't want to, I'm at a point where I don't want to fight just to fight, but I'm, it's the thing, the problem is I'm addicted to it. So I might battle with myself every day, you know? So since you've got other avenues of supporting your family, how are the hot sauce sales? They're great, man. When are we getting a new flavor? I'm not sure. Three was the goal uh, to get to because the three pack is, is, is nice, you know. But I do want to do a jerk sauce. I have a bunch of ideas that I want to do. I want to do a barbecue sauce. I have a bunch of things. Appreciate you giving me the bottle last time in uh, the garden. That was very delicious. We enjoyed it a lot. Thank you. Thank you, man.